Welcome to this week's weather report. I'm Doc Robin, your host. And if you are in the actualization zone on Facebook, welcome back. If you are new to my channel on YouTube, welcome. Say hello in the comments so I can come back and say hello to you. And today on this weather report, you know, I have never been really into astrology. I remember when I was a little kid, I would check my horoscope every single day, along with reading Dear Abby in the newspaper while I was eating my toast and drinking my hot cocoa before school. But as an adult, and as I studied psychology, and spiritual intelligence, and all the things that I've studied over the years, I've never really felt connected with astrology. And so this is not an astrological report. I'm not an astrologer, but I am somebody who is more than adept at being able to tune into the energies, the influences. Maybe they're astrological, but I just, I've always loved the weather. From the time I was a little kid, I loved looking at weather clouds. I've studied the weather. I always imagined myself that I could be a meteorologist when I grew up. Um, but maybe this is the kind of weather I was thinking about when I was a little kid and had no idea. So that's what we're doing here today and every week. If you're not a member of the Actualization Zone yet on Facebook, come and join us. Just type into the search bar on Facebook. The Actualization Zone will pop right up. It's for intelligent, intuitive leaders, many of whom have ADHD or suspect they have ADHD and who are creating positive, productive, and purposeful lives for themselves as we step into this new future. So here we go for this week. I'm using a different deck of cards. This is the cards I'm using this week are from the Spirit Animal Oracle by Colette Baron reed She's one of my favorites. And, um, you know, like I said, this isn't, when I tune into the energies, the non-physical influences that we're all, you know, I'm going to say subject to, but I don't mean that in a subordinate way, but just we are affected by the energies that we can't see. So these cards just open up my unconscious and perhaps yours as well as a way of really deeply understanding what we can, what we can do this week to support, our, support ourselves, to step out of stress, to step out of anxiety, worry, concern, and to step into flow, peace, hope, joy, creativity, intuition. Those are all the, the uh, consciousness states that are coming into the normal way of being in the world. Less hard work, less grit, less tenacity. So that's what we know for sure. The other thing I know for sure this week is that it is the summer solstice tomorrow here in the Northern Hemisphere. Of course, it's a winter solstice in the Southern Hemisphere. But this is one of my favorite days of the year. It's the longest day. It's a time when there's the most light in the Northern Hemisphere. But I also think about just how I felt about summer when I was a kid, just that real sense of freedom and empowerment and being able to do whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to. And while that's a little bit excessive, probably I didn't actually get to do those things, but there was always this concept or this idea that I possibly could stay out as late as I wanted to stay up all night looking at the stars with my friends or walking around in the dark just because, just because I lived in a peaceful, quiet area of the world. So with that in mind, let me see the animal spirits that are influencing us this week. And I actually saw one this morning who I know is in this little deck. I pulled several earlier that we're going to pull from today, but I was walking Cooper, my golden doodle. Oh, about eight o'clock this morning or so. And there was a big hawk flying overhead. And the hawk to me has always symbolized vision. My teacher, Barb used to say, the hawk will show you the way. So hawks are also messengers as well. And I took that as a really good message for this morning. So the first thing the first animal influence we have today is skunk, skunk spirit, spirit, <laughs> skunk spirit. Um, and the message with skunk is know your worth. So this is a good week to start focusing on your worth. I think too often women leaders compromise our work. We compromise what we, what we are of highest value in order to accommodate, in order to people please, 
in order to continue to tolerate the status quo. So this is a really good week to look at and to ask the question, where am I not owning my worth? Where am I not charging my worth? If you're negotiating contracts this week, really step into that fullest version of yourself, knowing your worthiness. And you don't have to do anything to prove you're worthy, by the way. You can just be, as a divine and eternal being, worthy. So you can just elevate you could imagine having a lever that you could push up to the very top from zero to 10 or from three to 10, just to elevate that sense of worthiness all the way up to the top and hold it there. It's not a cognitive strategy. It's a strategy that engages your imagination, engages your creativity. And if you're asking the question, who am I? Who am I to? That's one of the signals that you probably have some worthiness work to do. And one of the quickest way to do that, that worthiness work or to start the worthiness work is just to imagine that lever going all the way up to level 10. I am worthy. I don't have to do anything to be worthy. I don't have to prove anything to be worthy. I am, I am worthy just by virtue of who I am being. I am worthy. So that's the first influence. So you can call on skunk <laughs> to support your, your decision to show up as the most worthy version of yourself. All right, so what is the next one? Here it is right here. This is one of my favorites, horse, horse spirit. Horse spirit represents freedom. And the message here is freedom is yours. Remember I said, this is the week of the summer solstice. This is the beginning of the summer season in the Northern hemisphere. And what, regardless of where you are in the world, accessing and embodying the state of freedom, the consciousness of freedom is a really important thing to start doing right now. We keep on saying things like, I'll, when I get to X, then I'll feel free. When I get to X, then I'll feel happy. When I get to X, then I'll feel successful. So we're treating our lives as we're going for a destination. But what I have found to be the case is that it's the journey that matters. And if I were to get to a place of what freedom feels like in that moment, that freedom, that feeling of freedom would be fleeting in that moment. So we cultivate a sense of freedom every single moment of every single day. And if you can imagine the wild horses, we have wild horses here in Arizona that kick up dust and thunder across the desert. The ultimate freedom, the ultimate freedom. What does ultimate freedom mean to you? And you don't have to know the answer to that today or any day. You can just live in that question. Be curious about what that means. And you can kind of start to feel maybe your heart opening up to what it means to be truly free. We also have to remember that freedom is a polarity. So freedom doesn't exist on its own. It exists as a polarity with something that's the opposite of freedom. It could be enslavement. It could be captivity. I had a mentor one time tell me that you can't experience great joy unless, you've also, unless you also know the feeling of great sorrow. And perhaps that's also true with freedom. Not that I would wish captivity on any person, but we can be captive in our minds. Our consciousness can be held captive by the things that we pay attention to, scrolling on our screens, watching Netflix, comparing ourselves to other people. So where are you contributing to your consciousness being held captive? And how can you create more freedom just in your consciousness, not even in your daily life, not even in your work, but how can you just create more freedom in your consciousness? And you can imagine having a conversation with horse spirit and wondering, what does horse do to feel free? Well, horse just is free. And maybe you are too. All right, next one. Oh, here's a good one right here. It just jumps out at me. Wait, two of them jumped out. There we go. Dog spirit. Dog spirit. 
The message here is be loyal to what you love. Being loyal to what you love inherently means then that you better know what you love. I don't think that we take enough time to pay attention to what we actually love. I think that we get so busy doing things, doing the duties, responsibilities, and obligations, which by the way, is the antithesis of freedom. But love, doing what you love, being loyal to what you love, these contribute to your sense of freedom. So what do you love? One of my colleagues wrote a newsletter. She writes a newsletter every week. And today she wrote, I love snacks. I love dancing. What do you love? Can you be loyal to snacks and dancing? Because they're part of your spirit. I love getting up out of bed early in the morning and feeling the cool air on my skin when I take Cooper out for his first stretch of the day. I love that. I'm loyal to that. I savor it. I love my strong, hot coffee that my husband makes for me every morning. I love that. I'm loyal to that. What are you loyal to? Let's just make sure this week that you're being loyal to the things that you love rather than being loyal to your duties, responsibilities, and obligations and putting on the back burner for someday later the things that you love. Now's the time to bring those things that you love front and center, prioritize those things. This is a perfect week to do that. And the last card. What's this one? Oh, it's this one, Panther Spirit. It's very dark. Reclaim your power. Reclaim your power. So let me put that in the context of these other cards. First, we had Skunk Spirit, which is Know Your Worth. Then we had horse spirit, which is about freedom. And then we had dog spirit, which is about loyalty. Now we come to panther spirit, reclaim your power. So your power is the source of your potential. We leak out our personal power to things that really in the whole scheme of things don't really matter. So we, le we leak out our power to worry. We leak out our power to stress. We leak out our power to other people's agendas. But when you, call, when you call all of your power back to you, when you reclaim your personal power, you become the center of gravity in your own world. It's what it means to be empowered. Empowered comes from calling back all of the power that you've given away, that's been taken from you, that's been stolen from you, that's been hijacked. Just call it all back into the present moment. <sighs> What do we do with our power? I think a lot of times women leaders in particular are afraid of our power. I'm too much, we say. There's too much of me. I need to dim my light. I need to be more dimin diminutive. I need to couch my words. I need to frame what I'm saying. And I'm not saying go out and, you know, be rude, mean, and obnoxious. But I am saying when you sit in your center of power and you pull that up through your center, through your heart, and you let your power speak through your heart, that's your inner sense of knowing. That's your inner confidence. That's your self-approval. That's your self-worth. All of that is housed or situated in your center of power. And it's interesting, of course, that this is the overriding thing is reclaim your power right in the Northern Hemisphere when we're getting ready for the summer solstice. Sun is a central source of power on this planet, solar power, solar energy. So the sun is coming into its full power in this moment as well. So we can take a cue from the sun. The sun doesn't say, oh, put on your sunglasses. The sun doesn't care if you get burned. The sun just shines. And so what cue can you take from the sun? What lesson can you learn from the sun? As you tune into the natural world, as we've started this process on Monday of this week, just tune into the natural world. See what's going on for you this week in terms of how nature 
is supporting you, communicating with you, encouraging you, start noticing that. And that more than anything else is going to bring, bring you back into the present moment, which by the way, is also where your center of power is in the present moment. When you are worried, when you are afraid, when you are regretful, when you are in grief or mourning, all of those experiences pull you out of the present moment. So our work this week is to be present, to be loyal, to know that we are worthy, to cultivate a sense of freedom. But at the center of it, call back, reclaim your power. That is it for this week. I hope that you help, you found this weather report helpful. I'm your host, Doc Robin. You can find me on Facebook in the actualization zone. And you can find me on Instagram, Dr. Dr. R-O-B-Y-N, M-C-K-A-Y. Come and find me over there. Let me know. How'd you like this? How was this helpful for you? What did you take away from it? And until next time, big love. See you next time.